Hey guys, my name is Jesse Mew, and welcome to the Islands of Discord. This is going to be a brand new series on my channel that's kind of like a combination between a challenge series and a more story-driven series. Maybe leaning on the side of story-driven, because we're going to follow the oftentimes bitter rivalry between two very well-known groups of siblings in our lore. Here we have Seafoam and Quicksand, the Balance Sisters, and Rodukro and Kufan, the Bandit Brothers. As they represent two opposite ends of the moral spectrum, these two can just never seem to see eye to eye. Whenever both groups are involved in the fate of our tribes, you know that trouble is sure to follow. So I thought we would deepen the story behind them, and follow them as they descend back into the mortal realm. They've decided to shed their godly bodies, all of their powers, just so they could compete in this little challenge that they made. So this will decide once and for all who is the superior pair, and who has the power to lead a tribe to greatness. Before we get into the guidelines of the challenge itself though, I did want to show you the creatures that we'll be playing with. Seafoam and Quicksand in particular look so different from the way that they were back when they were first born. With these updated graphics, like honestly, I thought that I did something wrong with Seafoam at first, but it's just because they look so different compared to the Fernleaf Islands, back where they made their home. So Seafoam and Quicksand both have some custom gem colors too. I gave them this light aqua blue, kind of to show their connection to the sea. And here's Quicksand too, of course. She looks a little bit more similar to her previous model, and I tried to get all of their genes as close as possible to the originals. I had a little bit of trouble with the Bandit Brothers though, because I think there might be a difference in the way that the mask is generated now. I couldn't get it exactly the same, but I tried my best to get it as close as possible. And I figured the Bandit Brothers are known for changing their masks so often, I guess it would make sense if they made little tweaks here and there, especially as they're returning to the mortal realm, opening a whole new chapter in the book of their legacy. Now the Bandit Brothers have a silver gem color, because I thought it blended in super well with their mask. They have to be very sneaky after all. Those two gem colors will help us tell apart the different factions on our island, because they're going to be trying to amass followers to help them grow to help them regain the powers that they lost here. And as for all of the other settings, I did tweak the age limits too. Babies are now around for two days, children for three, teens for five, and adults have a lifespan of 40 days. So that's 50 days total, and that's going to be very important later when we get to the rest of the guidelines. The pregnancy duration is at three days, so a mother would have to wait for her baby to grow. That way the baby will be out of the nest before she can have her next one. I also increased the multipliers on enemy damage, hunger, environment, and the healing a little bit too. Basically just so predator attacks will actually feel significant here. We had to increase it since we increased the length of their lifespans. I think the only other change that I made would be in the gameplay settings. I gave them 40 pieces of food to start with since we have two different factions, so just 20 for each. Nesting material is the same because the bandits are never going to use this. Just like when they were around in the Harmony Islands, they're only going to be using the permanent nests they find around the world. The bandits are far too lazy to build their own nests. So I guess the nesting material would only go to the Balance Sisters? And maybe as a way to, again, show that duality between them, they're only going to be allowed to use the nests that they build. I have a tribe size limit of 20 creatures, and that doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be an even split between the factions. It's just a way to limit the amount of creatures that we have on the island, because more than 20 and it gets too hard to tell their stories. I've also activated blind gene mode, and this is going to be the very first time that I'm playing with this, so I'm super excited to see what sort of challenge it presents. This, I think, is a little bit of a gift from the Bandit Brothers. Maybe before they descended into this realm, they decided to steal this power too. That way, none of our deities will be able to peek into the future of their tribe mates and see what potential they're hiding deep down underneath. It'll be important that all of them are on even grounds after all, because we're going to be using the mutations in our mutation menu as a show of power for our factions. All of the world settings should be exactly the same. I don't think I turned off a single thing in here, so everything has the potential to spawn. But yeah, that's the basics for the settings. So let's go ahead and set up our deities on their brand new home. As is typical for brand new tribes, I think we're going to choose the Grass Mingle to start them on. 
This one is the most similar to what I remember the Bandit Brothers exploring back when they were first born, so I thought this would be a fitting place for them to return to. And I'm sure the Balance Sisters will love it too. Plenty of shells for both of them to collect. So while this is loading, I'll do my best to explain where the competition comes in. I wanted a good way to track it in-game, so we could figure which one of these factions are winning, and I figured the mutations in our mutation menu would be the best way. So mutations are going to be directly attributed to power for the deities, and every time one group unlocks one, they can then use it as a blessing for their tribe. That does mean that the other faction wouldn't be able to take advantage of it though. So say the Bandit Brothers unlock the Nimble Fingers, only they would be allowed to bless their followers with that mutation. But as this is a test of perseverance, each new mutation unlocked will give them a new source of energy too. A brand new life that will reset their lifespans back to the start. So for unlocking those nimble fingers, both of the Bandit Brothers would also have their ages reset to the beginning of the adult stage, which I believe is 10 days, and we would do that by using the console commands. So long story short, the first faction to see one of their deities pass away, either due to old age or injuries, they would be the losers of this challenge. We want to see which one of the groups can build together a strong enough team to unlock the most mutations in their time here. And in order to keep things interesting, I think we're also going to make a rule that after a certain amount of days, we need to go to a new island. Maybe they're seeking out new opportunities, new ways to unlock mutations of course so they would need to head off to new places to find more creatures. Right now, I'm not really sure how many days I want to choose. I'm thinking either 50 days or 100 in-game. 50 would be a little bit more of a fast-paced challenge, but maybe less time to really evolve the island's story. So let me know what you guys think. I think I'll actually make a poll on this video so you guys can help me decide. Either 50 days for a very fast-paced challenge, or 100 days for some more in-depth stories. Since our creatures on this island only have a lifespan of 50 days to begin with, the first option basically ensures that we would only see one generation per island. So it's up to you guys, but if we find that we prefer a different way later, we can always change it again down the line. So I think that means that we are officially ready to start on this giant grass mingle island with tons of different biomes. In fact, it looks like there's quite a bit of savanna out here, and I think that's something that the Bandit Brothers in particular would be very, very happy to see. We often find permanent nests hidden away inside those savanna grasses, so they'll probably want to find a place nearby to settle down. And of course, with their adventurous ways, they are going to charge straight off into the darkness first thing. But I do want to check. Since we have blind gene mode on, that means if we click on this tab right here, Oh my gosh, everything. Literally everything on this list should be a giant question mark. So we can't see a single one of these genes. It's the same if we're in the family tree too. Alright, so everything is left up to fate. That also means that if our deities have some children, there is the potential that they could end up sick. We can't even see immunity genes, so this could end up being very, very tricky. But I see that we have a crabbit over here. A crabbit guarding all of his shells in the ocean. So I think there's a pretty good possibility that our bandit brothers would go straight after the crabbit first. I mean, they can't resist. They would definitely try to steal some of those shells for their own. Let's have Roducro jump into the water first, lighting up the way for his brother. We'll have him settle down in the ocean too. This should be just shallow enough that they could try to crack open some of these shells. Though, of course, since they don't have Seafoam's nimble fingers, they are going to struggle quite a bit with this. That doesn't mean that it's a bad thing, though. Even though they're not cracking open the shell, that's still giving them the opportunity to unlock the Cracker Jaw on the mutation menu. So that would definitely give them a boost if they unlock one of those right off the bat. And Seafoam and Quicksand, you two are going to be a little bit more cautious about this. I'm sure that they would also want to settle down somewhere near the tide pools, but since the Bandit Brothers have gone this way, I think they're going to want to keep their distance. Oh, and there's a berry bush out here too! Well, Seafoam, you might just be the voice of reason. We'll have you come on over here and grab some of those berries. There's not very many, unfortunately. 
I guess if Van Kier isn't doing you guys any favors either. It makes me wonder what the other deities must think of this challenge. Since I am using the big name list for this challenge too, full of all sorts of names that you guys have left for me, I think what I'll do is maybe place the deities' names in there as well. That way if one of them does want to grace us with their presence, they could help out the faction that they deem most worthy. But does everything look safe over here for your sister, Quicksand? Maybe we'll have her jump into the water? Luckily, there's still enough ground lit up that Seafoam will be able to follow her, but I think she just wants to make sure that everything is safe here for Seafoam. She was always very, very protective of her sister, and that's because of that giant claw, of course. She's the one who's going to be doing most of the damage here. Oh my goodness. And just as if you guys are back on the Fernley Violence again, look at all of these shells that you have to collect. I mean, granted, the Bandit Brothers are not hurting for shells either, but I think that Seafoam is going to be very happy to see this. We even have one of these water-breathing plants over here. I wonder if maybe... Oh geez. If maybe we could lead Seafoam over here to grab that up, then she wouldn't get hurt if she goes for the deeper shells. But we're gonna have to make sure that you guys don't get stuck by any leeches. I wonder if that would actually count as an attacking action? So it'd get you closer to unlocking a mutation too. But look at this. Has the leech actually left a little present for you? I swear that wasn't there the day before. That is quite interesting. Well, I do want to bring Seafoam over to the water plant, but I think we should probably set her up on this tile. So Quicksand, it sounds like you're going to have to try to get rid of this leech for us right away. Let her jump onto the shore, slash the leech, and yeah, I'm almost positive that's going to count toward attacking. So that's a much easier way for you to unlock those genes. As long as you stay on your toes anyway, because the leeches could still surprise you. Now as for all of these other genes in here, the ones that are unlocked by default, like the eyesight, the normal ears, I'm still toying with whether or not we're going to be allowed to use these, so let me know what you think. Maybe the genes that are already unlocked, as well as the genes that would unlock for both factions. Kind of like the fertility here. We might say that neither of the groups are allowed to use any of these, which would certainly raise the challenge a little bit too. If we do have an issue with blindness, because I know that a lot of the wanderers around here are probably going to have that hidden away in their genetics. Not being able to correct it with the normal eyesight might be very, very difficult indeed. So again, just let me know what you guys think, and we'll tweak this challenge as we go. Let's have you guys sniff around again, though. Oh my gosh. Okay, it might be time to abandon this mission. Look how many Krabbits have come out after the Bandit Brothers. It's like they literally know. The Bandit Brothers have come back to steal every last one of their treasures. Well, three against two here, you guys know your odds. It's time to abort the mission. Come on down to the tide pools. Watch out for leeches, of course. But maybe it's time for you guys to find some followers of your own. If you can find another creature out here to help you, I'm sure the odds will be much more in your favor. Then you can come back and get rid of those crabbits and steal every last one of those shells too. This is part of the reason why Seafoam has just never understood the Bandit Brothers. She's not really here to steal any treasures. It's not about the adventure of it, really. It's just about sustaining her tribe and keeping her sister strong. That's why the Balanced Sisters always give their gifts to those who show a good united front. So tribes that work together are more likely to see some blessings from the Balanced Sisters. And I guess that means that tribes who are particularly adventurous would see their blessings from Kuvan and Rodugro. But more adventure just means more opportunities to find ways to unlock their powers. So, have the Balance Sisters ever seen these water-breathing plants before? I guess they must have. These were added with the Aquatic update, right? And the Fernley Violence definitely came after the Tribe of the Tides. So, I would assume that they're probably familiar with this too. A little gift from Splash himself. We'll have Seafoam go ahead and take the water-breathing plant, so she should be able to breathe quite well underwater. And then Quicksand, you might want to scoot over here. Actually, can she catch the piranha fish too? 
Yeah, I think she can. She has the claw and she has that fishing tail, which is actually a similarity between both of these factions. These two would have fishing tails too. You won't be able to see it here, of course. But I believe it was only these spiky bodies that took that away from them. It almost makes you wonder if maybe the Balanced Sisters themselves had a bit of a role to play in that. Maybe they didn't want to offer up their gifts to these brothers at all. If the Balanced Sisters are also connected to the ocean, then I guess we could say the fishing tail is part of their blessing too. But the rains have always been Van Keer, and it looks like he wants our tribe to find some food to eat, some more berries perhaps? if we can find some berry bushes out in the grass. Right now though, I think our two Balanced Sisters are more concerned with all of their shells. And this piranha too. Let's have Quicksand go ahead and scoop this one up. Kind of as a preventative measure. Never know if more leeches might be lurking around in these waters. And now let's have Seafoam finally dip her toes into the deeper portion of the ocean. She is fully submerged now but she should be just fine with that water-breathing skill on her. Still, Quicksand is going to be watching very close. We'll have her hover on the shore, maybe digging out a little area for her sister to return to, because I'm sure she's going to need her rest after this. Unfortunately, she still can't smell any berries in the distance, but I guess the coconut trees would actually be pretty good too. I always connected the coconut trees to the Bandit Brothers, because of their ability to daze our creatures, if they're a little bit too careless and settle down beneath one. But since Seafoam does have the cracking ability, I guess she would be able to pick those up with ease. Now, Roducro and Kuvan, let's have you move a little bit further down the shore. Oh, look at this! A tiny, meager little offering from Van Geer, the tiniest of all. Well, that's awfully fitting. Do you think maybe he was sick of you guys stealing his berries too? And if you two are going to be settling down inside the Savannah biome, I guess this is pretty much all that you're ever going to find. Oh, or not. Oh my goodness, I forgot all about these things. The termite hills. That's another thing that you guys are probably going to have in abundance out here. Do you think that means maybe they'll run into a little anteater too? I mean, that would be awfully lucky. I don't think inviting one to the tribe is going to be enough to give them the mutation, but it would certainly help them unlock it faster and with a little bit less pain involved. Yeah, this is perfect for the Band of Brothers. I could definitely see them invading Termite City, cracking open all of those towers and stealing their goods. So let's go ahead and skip the turn again. Day three on this island and still no sign of wanderers. Let's have them sniff around again, just in case. Oh, hello. Mr. Dodomingo. Do you perhaps know where a permanent nest is hiding? I guess they would actually use the Dodomingos to track down their nests, wouldn't they? That would be a great way for them to run into those old abandoned bases. Well, it's going to be pretty tricky for you guys to worm your way around to the Donamingo right now. It looks like the only safe way through is right here. So we'll have Kuvan go ahead and pick up the grasses. And I am so tempted to have him take a swipe at this too. Crack open the termite hill. I mean, you must be curious. You have never seen something like this before. Yeah, curiosity always gets the best of a band of brothers. So go ahead and crack that open. And then, of course, we have the issue of the termites on your fur. Actually, is that going to cause your brother to get injured? Ooh, with those spiky bodies. Yeah, look at that. He did take some damage. Oh, no. Kuvan, the curse of curiosity. Adventure might lead them to more opportunities, but apparently it also leads them to a little bit more pain in the process. So if they do unlock a mutation, and we reset their ages to the beginning of their adult lifespans, that's still not going to get rid of the damage that they've taken. In order to do that, they're going to need to find either a healing fruit out there somewhere, or they'll have to find somebody with the purse now to melt away all of the damage that they've taken. So our deities have to be super, super careful with their mortal bodies. Oh my gosh. Oh, our very first wanderer! Almost as if she's been lured here by their quiet cries of pain. 
Little Lala. Oh my gosh, what an adorable name too. Oh, that's going to be so hard for me to get used to. I keep thinking that we can just look at their genes. But you, Lala, you are a complete mystery to the Bandit Brothers. We have no idea what sort of secrets you might be hiding deep down inside. Unfortunately, we're out of turns with them too. So that's kind of like the worst possible time for you to turn up. Well, I'm sure she's probably going to stay over here. There's a good possibility that she's trying to crack open this acorn or something. Maybe she'll even come over here to try to paw up the roots in the ground. So she should stay pretty close. But I wonder if she does have a little bit of the healer's blessing in her too. I wonder. It is awfully timely that she showed up just as we were looking for a healer, so I guess we can only hope that she's hiding one of those traits deep inside. Now Seafoam, you look like you're fine. Oh no, but every last one of your shells? Oh my gosh, every last one of them was taken away by the tides. Oh, Seafoam. We usually connect that to one of the Bandit Brothers' tricks. But of course, with them here on this island with you, that can't possibly be the case. It's just the fickle ocean playing tricks on you instead. That has to be so heartbreaking, though. Here she was, all ready to charge into the ocean and find those shells. But it looks like that's not going to happen now. Instead, you're going to have to make do with all of the coconuts on the shores. Something tells me Quicksand is a little bit happy about it, though. Like, a little bit relieved, in a way. She was probably worried about her sister, and she knows she can't follow her down here. If we could only find another one of those water-breathing plants, it might be a different story then. Then both of the sisters could descend into the water and collect a whole bunch of food to entice somebody to their side of the challenge. Oh, little Lala, have you come over here to inspect Rodukro? It seems like she's wormed her way around. Maybe she's making sure that all of the termites are successfully peeled away from those quills of his. It's Kuvan, after all, who has the injury still. Luckily, he's not bleeding or anything. He just has two days worth of damage sitting on his lifespan. So let's go ahead and skip the day again, and then we'll make sure that we... No, that we invite her right away? Oh, Quicksand, what a terrible start for you two. Now you even have a Baryena looming over your shoulder? Oh, well, we know that Quicksand isn't one to back away from a fight, especially if it means keeping Seafoam safe. But you're going to have to be very, very careful about this. I wonder if maybe this might be a gift from Anamim. If maybe she's trying to show you that she's watching. She probably saw you attacking those leeches before, and figured if you want a real challenge, if you want a real good way to unlock that claw for your team, then you might need one of my trusty Baryinas to help you out. Well, we'll get to you in just a moment, because right now we need to offer up a little bit of food to you, Lala. Let's have Rodukro offer up his share of food. Oh, excellent, and we have some more back here to replace it right away. Oh my goodness. And with that big nose of yours, you can finally smell deep into the grasses too, revealing yet more of Termite City and plenty of berry bushes in the distance as well. Now, it looks like they've actually run into one of the poison berry bushes. And that in particular has me very intrigued. Even though none of our factions have a way to safely pick from the poison berry bushes yet, that seems like something that these two would definitely instruct their faction to do. No pain, no gain, after all. And they are all about taking risks. But now that you're part of our tribe, Lala, let's go ahead and change your gems over to the silver color of the bandits. That actually looks very, very pretty against your fur, too. You are fitting right in already. So she's 16 days old? She's actually a little bit older than the Bandit Brothers are right now. So maybe she has a bit more wisdom to share with them? A little bit more experience to lend. But at the same time, she is still very young, so she might still be a bit reckless. And she is also not the greatest at hunting. I see you back there, little bunny gazing over these shriveled up berries. I guess we would actually have to have Rodukro lunge ahead so he could swipe at the bunny. That will at least save the berries from getting all picked away, so Lala can go ahead and collect them leisurely. I wonder if maybe this is part of some remedy of hers, since she doesn't have access to the healing plants. And she certainly doesn't have the personnel either. 
Maybe her ancestors used to mix together berries to try to heal the wounded. With some varying results, of course. Unfortunately for you two, that is not going to help you with this Baryuna situation. Oh my gosh, of all the things, Quicksand. Well, I guess go ahead and take a swipe. In fact, you might actually be able to take two swipes before you have to dance away. It seems like she can get all the way over to her sister's side. So if she settles down right here by the tide pool, I think she's going to be far enough away that we won't have to worry about damage. So go on, Quicksand, jump all the way back here. And I guess we'll just cross our fingers if the Baryuna decides to follow. We don't really want to lose him either, because that's going to make it more difficult for us to find a suitable base. We don't need him ambushing our creatures after all. But at the same time, if it did decide to meander away into bandit territory, I'm sure the Balanced Sisters would be just fine with that too. So we should be ready to skip the day again. Let's zoom in over here and see what the Baryuna decides to do. Oh, straight into the water. Unfortunately, the coconuts didn't fall on your head, so it looks like you're not dazed. But with only seven days remaining? Oh, Quicksand, you could actually take care of the Sparyina on this turn. Excellent. Oh, maybe not so excellent. Oh my goodness. Well, we have a peaceful bear. That's not so bad. That would actually protect us from these Baryuna situations in the future. But this I do not like to see. A rogue male. I mean, while it would help you guys collect followers of a sorts, having a few babies wouldn't be a bad thing. More nimble fingers to help your cause. But rogue male babies are always risky. And now that we can't look into his genes either, the stakes are going to be even higher. So, Quicksand, I guess all you can really do is attack the Baryuna. Oh my gosh, and on top of it, it looks like he might be blind too. Yeah, I don't know if we want to really introduce that into our tribe just yet, especially because our poor little Balance sisters are just trying to get their footing here. This might not be the best time for you to have any babies with the rogue male. But I see that leech down there too. That's going to be another issue. We need to send the rogue male away, we need to hit the Baryuna, and we need to keep our creatures away from this leech. Alright, well first things first, let's have Seafoam move down here. The rogue male has gone back into the grasses. Oh, following Seafoam? Oh, I think he might be smitten with you. The rogue male himself must have heard legends about the Balance Sisters, and he can't believe that he's in their presence now. But Quicksand, you're going to have to slash at this leech. And then I guess we're going to have to leave the Baryuna battle for a different day. One more swipe just isn't going to be enough, and I don't want to leave you open to the Baryuna's injuries. I'm so torn. Do we want to risk this baby? Do we want to let Seafoam have a baby of her own? I mean, it seems like such a needless risk right now, but at the same time, it might be the only way to help their faction grow. So right now, I think she's going to keep him at an arm's length. Oh, she can't even attack him. Interesting. Are you perhaps a little bit smitten with him too? It must be that big body. She only has a one attack strength anyways, so she wouldn't be able to do very much damage. And in fact, his big body would soak up every last bit of it, because he has a one in defense too. So I guess instead, maybe we'll have to bring you back down the shore. And of course we'll have to do the same for Quicksand, leading the Sparagina in actual circles, which must be terribly frustrating for him. We've got to remember that we have a peaceful bear out there though. No matter what happens on this turn, I would definitely like to see if they can get the peaceful bear on their side. Not only would that help them with any future babies, but it would keep away the Baryunas too. So what can we do with our little bandits today? What does Lala think actually? She still hasn't been able to heal your wounds, Kuvan, so I wonder if instead she would send you guys off in a different direction. Granted, I think it would be for the best if you guys clear out all of the savanna grass, because surely there must be some sort of nest around here somewhere. Oh, that rogue male is going to get to our creatures, isn't he? There is no way he's going to turn around now. 
Oh, this is like the worst possible time for love, too. I can't imagine that the Balanced Sisters would want to settle down with a nest with a Varyena looming over their territory. This is just a bad situation for them all around. But it's not as though the bandits are going to stop their turns just because the Balanced Sisters are having some trouble. So no matter what happens here, we're going to have to carry on with their turns. So a little swipe for another bunny from you, Roducro, and we'll have you pick up that meat too. And there's the first rogue male baby. I am not surprised to see that. We'll have Kuvan sneak around this way. Oh, I was going to have him clear out the grass, but it looks like there's not very much grass for him to clear out on this side. Maybe Lala will have a little bit of extra luck. The savannah sure does have quite a bit of stuff in here, but we still haven't found a single one of those permanent nests. Oh, that's right. We have the Dodomingo to follow. Oh, Lala, I wonder if maybe you've been following the Dodomingo? She did come from the generally same direction, after all. Maybe she and the Dodomingo have even been working together. And now we have this situation to take care of. Oh, Mr. Pokemail, if only we could make you part of the Balance Sisters team, but he's just far too flighty for any sort of commitment. So it's very likely that he's going to be off on his own again once we pass the day here. And honestly, good riddance, at least as far as the challenge is concerned. I do appreciate that the Balance Sisters are both going to have a baby, though. I mean, we can at least cross our fingers that the babies will still have the claws and the nibble fingers. Maybe this will be a good way for the Balanced Sisters to finally get ahead. Even though their lives might be a little bit more chaotic than the bandit side of our journey, they'll have a leg up if they have more creatures on their side. And especially if they're their own children. It's actually kind of funny how these two sides are so different right now. The bandits quite fittingly are just taking in any rogues that they come across, while the Balanced Sisters are actually settling down and starting a family as a way to create their tribe. A quick sand, please. Go ahead and get rid of the Sparahina for us. That is going to be number one on the list. As our rogue male goes off into the darkness, running off to find his new adventure. We'll pick up the Sparahina meat and try to figure out where we're going to go next. I guess the best course of action would probably be to go back to the peaceful bear. Maybe we could see if we could offer up a little bit of that extra nesting material assuming that nothing else dangerous is in our path right now. It looks like we're all good, so Quicksand, go ahead and scoot around the edges of the palm tree. We'll have Seafoam jump in front of you, maybe trying to scout around for some more of those delicious coconuts too. As she sniffs into the darkness and finds the peaceful bear waiting right on those very same shores. See, I think in the next episode, these two are going to try to make friends with the wildlife a protector for their potentially blind babies as they find a place to truly settle down. And as for the bandits, I'm sure they're going to continue carving their adventurous pathways deep into the savannas. It actually looks like the savanna leads straight over to this tree. They're all kind of connected in their own ways. And if we follow this entire strip of savanna, that would actually lead us over to the jungle ports. You know, I don't think I mentioned when we do eventually migrate, we are only going to be allowed to bring our four deities. So while they go off in search of new opportunities, new adventures to be had, everybody that they've shaped here will be forced to stay behind. So that means no matter how big of a family the Balanced Sisters grow beneath these trees, they're going to have to leave them when the time eventually comes. I think that'll offer an interesting twist to the challenge, especially as far as healing is concerned. I mean, if we do find a personnel creature out here on the grasses somewhere, we would have to basically abandon them once we're ready to go. So just because one group has an advantage on one island doesn't mean it's going to last on the next one. So I hope you guys are just as excited about this story as I am. I'm really looking forward to fleshing out the personalities of our deities some more. So as always, feel free to let me know if you guys have any suggestions for guidelines that the factions might follow. Kind of like the nest rule with the bandits. So let me know who you guys are rooting for. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye guys!